So our most common native conifer in the Willamette Valley is the Douglas fir. And the Douglas fir is not a true fir. Um, so usually in, in um, writing it's hyphenated Douglas hyphen fir um, to imply that it is actually a false fir. So it's um, more closely related to some of our pine trees. The scientific name is Pseudosuga um, menziesii and easily identifiable by its sort of bottle brush leaves. So the needles are arrayed around the stem, um, sort of a bottle brush shape. And then the cones are super distinctive. So the cones are um, fairly small, and then they have these long bracts that um, are kind of three-lobed. Um, and in the kids' programs, we talk about them as looking like a mouse diving into the cone. Um, so that's really memorable for them and actually this becomes a very recognizable tree for them as long as they can find the cone. Um, so pretty easy tree to identify. Now, you're not always gonna get so lucky as to find a branch right underneath the tree. Um, so sometimes you just have to go on bark, especially when these are trees growing in a, a fairly um, enclosed forest. So they don't have a lot of branches lower down. It's all high up in the canopy. Um, so the bark is, is different than any other native tree we have in the Willamette Valley. And we'll take a look at um, one of the other trees in a moment. Um, it tends to be a lot more kind of plate-like where it's developing into these distinct, um, distinct ridges. It's really hard, not fibrous at all. Um, and as a tree grows, these plates tend to expand. So you get the cracks um, and then the color of it is a bit different. And part of that is from the lichens that are growing on the outside of it. Um, so it tends to be a bit grayer and then you often get a kind of light greenish cast from some of the lichens growing on it, depending upon the, the habitat in which it's growing. Um, and that tends to separate it uh, fairly well. You use all of those clues uh, together. This incredible tree is an incense cedar. Uh, scientific name is Calicedrus decurrens, and it's a member of the cypress family. Um, and the branching patterns of this tree here are really characteristic of the incense cedar and a lot of members of the cypress family where you kind of have these low swooping branches. Um, sometimes you'll have multiple trunks on the tree. Um, this specimen here is really, um, really amazing. Um, its size is incredible. Um, and we think that this may be one of the oldest trees on site um, just based on its size. Now size is not always a good measure of a tree's age, but given um, similar sized uh, incense cedars elsewhere, um, we can guess that this is probably a, a fairly old tree, um, 250 to 300 or so, um, maybe older. Um, the other really interesting thing about incense cedars in our area is that we're kind of at the northernmost limit for this species at this low of an elevation. And you'll see them continue northward in the mountains, but um, at kind of valley elevations, you tend to see it um, further south into uh, Douglas County and then into Josephine County and the Siskiyous where it becomes really common and you get some really fantastic, huge uh, six to 12 foot in diameter specimens. Um, so this is kind of pushing the limits of its range, but clearly this one is doing really well here. Um, and we have a number of uh, incense cedars in this forest, in this incense cedar forest that are um, about this size. Another interesting thing about this tree is that it shows that it was growing in a completely open environment. So if we look at the branching structure with these really low branches um, that are extending quite far up, um, the tree hasn't pruned those off yet, so they didn't die that long ago. Um, so just the structure of this tree shows that it was growing when there was no forest around it. And we actually know that for a fact because we have aerial photos from uh, 1936 um, that show that, you know, this tree, there's a very large incense cedar over off to my left and behind me and a few other really large incense cedars were the only trees growing in um, this part of the Arboretum at that time. The rest of it was kind of an open prairie grassland with some scattered oaks. Um, so we've seen some major changes over the last uh, 100 years, largely due to um, a change in the fire regimes and fire suppression. Um, so the structure of this tree can tell you a lot too about the history of, of the place. So you can see that the bark is quite different from the bark of the Douglas fir. It has a lot 
uh, more of kind of a deep rusty red color. So that's really common of the instant cedars, particularly as they get older in age. Um, you can also see that the bark is quite furrowed um, and it's also a lot more fibrous than um, the Douglas fir bark. So the cy cypress family bark tends to be quite fibrous. Um, so pieces can, can flake off really easily. Um, so pretty easy to distinguish. Of course, the, the needles are very different. So we have these kind of fan-like sprays um, with the needles held out essentially kind of in a flat plane. And then their um, fruit, their seeds are very different as well. So we have sort of a um, kind of a, a duck bill shape to the, the um, seed capsule. Um, and you can find these littering the ground um, right now, pretty much in the, in the early fall is when they, they begin to, to shed.